really relish the chance to uh, interact with you in terms of questions you may have about uh, the, the topic and all around the topic, which is uh, company language assessment um, and the, um, the subtitle is very important, how to give the training manager what they really want. So how to tune into the company, uh, build relationships with the training manager and uh, provide wonderful uh, business English deliverables and happy outcomes for everybody, including yourself. Uh, my background is, uh, I've been in teaching around, uh, teaching most of my life. Um, I, I work now for International House London, uh, part of the big IH uh, network around the world. We, uh, in the executive centre there, we, we train about seven, eight hundred people a year, uh, both uh, in small groups and one to one. We, we also do uh, corporate work actually in company with small UK companies and recently uh, we've been uh, doing a little bit more work abroad. Uh, the subject of tenders was mentioned earlier on and uh, again we've, we've uh, touched on that and uh, uh, got uh, into uh, some, some big companies and uh, some of the the observations in the talk here will, will come out of that. And I'm more than happy to uh, share experience and answer any questions you have about anything uh, that pops up uh, at the end. So, uh, yes, it's not like the ones that work, but I'm sure. Oh, I need to do for Where's the thing? Where's the, where's the, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I use these smart boards in London, but uh, yeah, we interact with them a bit more. Um, okay, so uh, dealing with training managers, what's it like? Well, um, what do they want? How can you help them? What can you get out of it? Training managers are uh, 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 people like you and me. Uh, they, uh, they want to get the job done. Uh, building a relationship with them is key. Um, the, the relationship that you build with them is also one with, uh, with the company. Uh, so a little bit of research on the company helps as well, that's, that's obvious. Um, and of course, you are a company. You uh, may become a one, or in my case, I have 31 staff uh, who I can call on. Um, so being as professional as possible in terms of how you present yourself, your CV, um, and, and selling your skills, which will come on to later on, is, is a key part of it. Um, the, the company itself might be a very small company um, and within that you might just be dealing with, with one person. Um, it could be the HR director, it could even be <coughs> the, the managing director, uh, him or her. Um, in that case, your job will be reasonably straightforward. Um, you will be able to uh, put pretty much everything on the table straight away and uh, then uh, present your proposal and deliver the goods. Larger companies, uh, obviously the, the, the work is more cut out for you uh, at different levels. Uh, you've got to uh, do the research on the company, find out exactly how many people are involved in, in the, the chain of command as it were, between the top and uh, the person you're working with, who may be any one of uh, these people. Um, and again, I'd say, in my experience, that there, there are probably two broad types of, of companies. <coughs> There's the, the one where uh, you're engaged by, it could be a junior training coordinator who sees your website or phones you up or gets your business card, and uh, that might be for pretty, pretty run-of-the-mill stuff. Uh, or you might bump into the uh, CEO or director at, a, at an event. Um, and change cards and then six months later get a, get a phone call and uh, you, you are then perhaps uh, given the golden key. You can do anything you want, you can do coaching, uh, training, because you've got this relationship with trust already at the top. Um, you need to be aware of both and I think everything in between as well. Three types of training manager, I'm just again broadly uh, taken from my experience over the years. Um, Tina X. Teffler, I mean, um, Tina X. Teffler is who she looks like. She's probably had uh, a CELTA or a Trinity course in her career and very quickly realized that 
there's not a lot of money to be made in ELT. She hasn't done her research obviously well enough. There is money to be made, as we all know, but um, you, you do have to sweat a bit of blood to get it. But she's gone into corporate work, and uh, so she she knows, uh, well, she thinks she knows quite a bit about um, <coughs> language training and, 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 and how to do it. So in a way, she could be your best friend, but she could also be your worst enemy. Um, so moving on from her, you've got uh, the type I've called Diane Developer. And if, in case any of you are wondering why they're all ladies, in my experience, yeah, probably ninety-five percent of training managers do tend to be ladies. So that's just uh, this track record there. So Dan, well, she's somebody's terribly keen uh, on getting uh, any, any people developed. Uh, she has a budget for that. Uh, the, the company itself may be working with. Uh, very fixed uh, development targets, training targets, which change every year, move upward, and so on. So she wants to sort of fulfill the norm, and uh, 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 is happy again to, to work with you uh, in a, a mutually cooperative relationship. Um, Olivia O'Connor is an interesting, <laughs> an interesting beast, Olivia. She, um, she tends to think of the world in numbers and pretty much nothing else. She's a very much a bottom line person. Uh, I think we, we touched on it earlier on in terms of purchasing managers and, and uh, people who uh, want uh, language training for the company, but they want the cheapest possible because that's what the person above them is saying. You get the best deal, I don't care. If they say they're good, I want the cheapest for the same honor. So with uh, Olivia here, your work may well be cut out for you because you'll have to do a lot in terms of persuasion to show that what you're delivering uh, and the added value and the extra um, services you're offering uh, will actually impact on the bottom line of the company and make a difference to how their staff can go out and bring in the money for uh, the company on a national or global level. So what are the common factors? Well, um, I guess, uh, in my experience, again, lack of knowledge is a huge one, even with um, uh, uh, etc. Um, the, 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 the somebody armed with a, uh, a training course like, like sales and maybe a year's experience are probably they're not going to engage enough with uh, the language training professionally to, to know the, 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 the quality tools that we work with now. Um, Common European uh, framework reference level is vital these days uh, when dealing with companies. Uh, a knowledge of it on your part will uh, be a professional badge uh, to not only open doors but, but to show the training managers that you, you know what the hell you're talking about. And the more you can actually memorize and, and acquaint yourself with, if it's a vast document as you know, uh, available online, available free, wonderful doors, uh, do, do get into it. Levels, uh, again, it's my experience that, that very, very few training managers uh, know how big a level is. Uh, so in other words, you, uh, you, know, you, you work your guts out, uh, you sell, I don't know, a course of 20 hours or something, and, 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 and they expect uh, at the end of that 20 hours the learners to be uh, operational in English at uh, advanced level when they were you know, pre-intermediate at the beginning. Um, so you, you do need to uh, educate training managers about uh, what it means to, to have two hours of language, uh, you know, very good, uh, highly professional language classes a week for ten weeks and, and what, what they will get out of that at the end. Um, available tests, of course, again is important. Um, in, in my, my long career, I've, I've worked with uh, LCCI, London Chamber of Commerce, uh, TOEIC, um, uh, Cambridge, obviously, a huge range of uh, tests, uh, from <coughs> the main suite general exams to business exams like uh, BEC for pre-experience and uh, BULATS for, for corporate work. Um, and and there, are, there are more available. I mean, um, they, they are say, multiplying all the time, but there, there are a good range of tests available. Um, so, Increasingly, training managers are driven by targets, as I said. They, management and, and corporate life these days is, is target-driven. It may not be in 
in our world so much, but I know that's one thing I've noticed in you know, when, when we were asked to, to you know, see how much our lives have changed professionally over the last five years. I mean, being target driven has impacted a, a lot on what I do, uh, setting our annual targets, uh, measuring performance against those, and uh, then feeding that back into uh, staff appraisals and need for training and, and so on. And basically, all of us want something at the end of the day. The, the training manager will, will want to um, talk to her boss about, about the success of the um, program, um, the, you know, the, the, the positive feedback, the boxes ticked, the, 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 the five stars given to the training. So uh, bear that in mind as well, that uh, you're, you're doing a service for the, for, for, for the company, but you're also doing a service for an individual. So anything <coughs> of, uh, making that individual uh, a better person in their job will, will help too. So, to stay on top of it all, you, you do need to uh, think like a bit like an ELT manager. Um, and if you're, you know, if you're just a, a freelance trainer, as many of us are, it, 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 it's, it's something that maybe doesn't come that easily because you, you've actually got to uh, you know, do the networking, do the presentations, uh, think of the resources you have available, you know, do your budgets and everything else. But that's a great education itself, and I think, you know, the theme of this day is professionalism, and, and working out a small detail like that uh, makes you, in the end, a, a much more professional uh, trainer. Stay at the competition. Uh, I'm sure we all do it. We look at our competitive websites and uh, see how they're charging, and uh, uh, read between the lines. <coughs> we, we always know. Uh, uh, um, what, uh, what is bullshit on, excuse me, bullshit on the website and what isn't in terms of what the opposition is, is trying to do. Um, but of course we do it ourselves, I think, when we're, when we're presenting to uh, a training manager. Uh, we, we will probably not write something on our uh, presentation uh, document, which is, um, um, I think, the group needs um, Sentence, you know, an elementary sentence structure, and you know that's what they do in you know, elementary grammar. Uh, we're business English trainers, so what we say what they need is um, uh, basic report writing skills. So you, you, you doctor the language up, I'm sure we, we all do this. Prepare your toolkit. The toolkit is, I think, pretty vital, and you may already guess what components might be in it. Um, training needs analysis. Uh, is a corporate training uh, uh, audit. Um, it, this would need a whole session uh, on its own to, to go into uh, the various questions you ask, the forms you complete, uh, the, the do's and don'ts of uh, working with different cultures, different corporate departments, and so on. Um, but I had, I had the um, great experience a couple of years ago of going to uh, a big oil company in Kazakhstan and uh, working there with getting right into the company, uh, doing a, a needs analysis for each department, and um, then uh, briefing uh, the training manager on what we could provide, what we could deliver, and uh, how we could test their people at the end of the, uh, the courses we were offering. Uh, the Common European Framework, as I mentioned before, we'll take, take a quick look at that in a second if you're not familiar with it, but I think most, most of you are. And uh, the, the deliverables, what, what you can uh, provide, so the, the, the courses, the material you provide, uh, the, um, the, the, the actual curriculum, what you put into it uh, based on the, the needs that have come up during your language audit or, or needs analysis. <coughs> And I think as well, for very important, keeping the training manager happy, uh, the, the formal assessment uh, at the end. Uh, how do you show that the people on the course have actually got from somewhere here to hopefully somewhere way up here because of your training? Uh, this is just a glimpse, for those of you who don't know it, of the, uh, some of the speaking um, um, can-do statements from the Common European Framework. Uh, very uh, 
annotated, but um, uh, you, you, know, you do, we work with these all the time. Um, this, this is, I hope I'm performing somewhere up here at the moment, but um, <laughs> this, this, is, uh, this, is, this is how, how uh, our intermediate learners work, how our upper intermediate learners work. Um, and going into the common European framework will uh, give you uh, a lot more clues about the sort of sub-skills sub -skills that, that need to be delivered <coughs> uh, at each level um, in order for people to feel they've achieved something. Um, to, to measure this, um, uh, we've had particular success with uh, this uh, fairly new Cambridge offering uh, of corporate language testing called BULAS. Um, it's, uh, I think the, the reason why corporates like it is that it's uh, uh, something which doesn't, for the, uh, the workers, involve an awful lot of uh, extra, extra study. You don't need to have you know, three hours of homework every, every evening to, to, to prepare for this exam. You, you, it's not daunting. You can do it as you would go and have a coffee in the staff canteen. It's, 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 uh, it's a very uh, easily set up, easily administered exam, uh, which can be used if you want to as an entry or, or exit test from your training, uh, or simply as an annual guide to uh, uh, the, the, the corporate uh, performance in English of our workforce. It's um, links very clearly to the Common European Framework. It has uh, quantitative <coughs> score data. Uh, it's delivered, delivered online now, and uh, for for the reading and the listening component, you, you get the uh, the numbers in terms of the output uh, of the test. And that, as I said, is something that training managers love. Um, the exam, I think, uh, a lot of training managers in the Far East line is TOEIC. And the reason why I think TOEIC got into uh, the market early on and, and had huge success with uh, businesses and corporations in the Far East is that everything was denominated in terms of a, a three-figure score. So you, you took the exam and you, you got a score out of uh, 980, I think. Training managers loved it. It moved up into the five, five mark uh, notches. Um, so, well, it has this element, I think, which is very good, but it has something else. Um, it's, uh, it tests all the, all the four skills. Um, I mean, again, I'd say that, that they're not the only uh, exam that I'd be uh, jumping uh, on this particular uh, bandwagon. Of course, it's not a bandwagon, it's something that, that is actually vital if you're going to uh, assess the performance levels of people the end of a language course, where other exams uh, in the past have maybe, maybe failed in terms of assessing their um, uh, competence level and their understanding of uh, reading and listening. Where, where Gulat succeeds is people have an interview uh, with the uh, native speaker or online interview, and uh, uh, it's a very, very good uh, measure, in my experience, of uh, their, their reductive skills as well as their receptive skills. And you get you get test results back normally in about 10 days as well, which uh, is, happy. It's, it's a great thing for, uh, for, for the corporate market. And increasingly these days, I'd say, um, because of the um, uh, need to work in the UK for, for many companies, um, uh, visa uh, uh, needs are important as well. I don't know how, how much this impacts on the work of many of you here, but Gulas has now just been upgraded to the status of a secure English language test. Uh, and as such, it is acceptable by the UK border agency uh, to enable people to get work visas and extend student visas and things like that. So it's one of a, a, a quite small um, uh, band of tests which are uh, <coughs> recognised and as such will have a big impact on people's uh, career and ability to work in the UK or, or even abroad. 
Um, the deli delivery I mentioned online, and of course the the, the team at Cambridge have got uh, years and years of uh, uh, research in terms of uh, testing efficiency, validity, and everything else to to make sure that it works. And uh, uh, they they bring a wealth of experience to us. And if anybody wants more information about it, we have a little uh, well, that's leave at the back of which uh, I. I Council you to take and have a look at. In terms of you guys getting getting into Bulats, uh, it's operated on a, an agency basis. So there's normally a, a local agent near you you can contact and you can get exams through them. But uh, going into a company uh, armed with this and the other things I've I mentioned uh, is uh, I think in my experience a guarantee that you will earn more money. Uh, you will present yourself in a highly professional light um, and uh, you will have a happy relationship with a training manager and he or she will have a happy relationship with you and uh, your career will uh, go hopefully stratospheric mm -hmm. as a result.